Welcome to Dart Annotated Docs. Today we are taking a tour of the Dart language. We have some other videos on uh, the language samples, uh, but this is going to be the much longer tour of the Dart language. Okay, let's jump right in. So what I'm going to do is be guiding you through the documentation so you don't have to go through it alone and I'll be annotating it with my own comments and opinions um, to provide some context. So we're at dart.dev, um, guides language, language tour. And this page shows you how to use each major Dart feature from variables and operators to classes and libraries with the assumption that you already know how to program in another language. So this might not be the best place to start if you're brand spanking new. Uh, you might head over to, I believe it's the samples and tutorials language samples section, uh, which they also link here for a briefer, less complete introduction to the language. Um, but I'm also here guiding you through uh, this tour, so, so maybe it'll work out for you. Uh, to learn more about Dart's core library, see the library tour. Okay, that's going to be the core libraries that's here on this left side. So that goes into more depth. And then whenever you really want to get down into the weeds, into the nitty gritty details, there is the Dart language specification. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And what you can look at is the formal specification for Dart 2. And it is a PDF, a 249-page PDF. Um, but, you know, if we get into something like variables or functions or classes and you want to see, um, you know, how something uh, really works under the hood, um, this is a great place to go and really geek out uh, on, on some Dart details. And just look at for example, the if statement. Um, it also uses this, um, I forget the name of it, but it's a special kind of notation. So it's a good way to get familiar with that uh, as well. But we're not going to be going into this right now. Just know that it's there. Okay. Um, oftentimes the best way to learn is by doing. And so we make use of the dart pad, um, which is um, an online tool so you don't have to copy and paste code into your own editor or terminal. So let's open that in a new tab. Okay, so there's our Dart pad. It's ready to go. And then, so this page uses embedded Dart pads for some examples. So if there's empty boxes, that's, um, if you see empty boxes, then something's wrong. There's a Dart pad troubleshooting page, but we should be okay. Um, but for whenever there isn't an embedded uh, Dart pad, I'm going to copy and paste that over into the Dart pad and run it. Okay, so let's go over a basic Dart program. Now we're officially kind of like at the start, at the top of the content section. This, this following sample code uses many of Dart's most basic features. So we define a function. That's instructions to the machine or the computer or the phone if you this program happens to run on a mobile device for giving them instructions to do something. Um, and then this main function, indicated by the curly braces, is um, just going to print out a number on the screen. Um, and this is what we call a void kind of function because it's doing something. It's not... Um, assembling data and, and returning it back to the caller of this function. And the caller of this function is really like the program itself. Like main is where all the magic starts. Okay, it's the, it's the very beginning where, where things need to be initialized and set up um, and be executed from main. Right, let's copy this over just so we can see what it does. Okay, so I replaced everything here. Okay, we define print integer. Um, it expects to receive a, a number, which is an integer, and then it prints that. Uh, this is a string interpolation here, so within this string we're saying 
whatever is passed in, in this case down here in this main function, we have a number equal to 42, and print integer is going to pass in that 42. It says, okay, that's an integer, it all checks out. I'm going to print it. Um, yeah, that's it, let's see if it works. The number is 42. Perfect. Okay. So here's what this program uses that applies to all or almost all Dart apps. Okay. These two, I think those are forward slashes. <laughs> yeah, backslashes are the other ones. Uh, forward slash or whack whack. You might hear some people say that. Uh, so that's a comment. That's a single line comment. Um, so each each line is is analyzed, um, and it just ignores that. So you know that could be there. It could also be oops, in here, and the the program is going to ignore single line comments. Okay. Uh, this void keyword. Um, so this is a special type that indicates a value that's never used, um, a value. So when we print something to the screen, when we play a sound like some kind of output to the user that's not directly used by the program. So like when we said the number is 42, that wasn't saved in a variable and used in some other part. Um, of the program, you know, in, in some other function. I get that, that variable, um, you know, the return value from print integer. Let's say we wanted to pass in that function or something. Something like that. I don't know if this is legal, but <laughs> this is just kind of like pseudocode. Um, th that value is never used anywhere else. It's just output to the screen and then it ends. That, that's it. Okay. Um, it's a value that's that's never used. It's a special type. Uh, functions like print integer and main that don't explicitly return a value have the void return type. Okay. We saw this int. That's another type. It indicates that something is an integer. There are built-in types. Um, you should get familiar with them. Some are capitalized. Some are not. Um, you'll also learn how they relate to each other, um, where like an int and a string ultimately all share a common ancestor, which is an object. Um, okay, number 42, this is a number literal, so it's, it's not computed. Um, it's, it's, it's not like um, maybe there was something where you could say like, the int class, maybe you could say like dot new or something. Um, like in another programming languages, you can say like string, you know, some, and then put in some argument here. Or you could say like int five. I don't know if this is legal or not. <laughs> this is again just pseudocode. So we don't say like integer and pass in a value and expect it to resolve to be an integer. Um, for sure, because like you could have like maybe you have a variable and you don't know what the type is. You know, it could be a string like that, or it could be a real number. And then let's say you have like integer, and you pass in that variable so that it resolves to being an integer. Um, so that that wouldn't be a number literal. Whereas like when I use 123 here, that is more of a number literal. Okay. Number literals are a kind of compile time constant. All right. Um, this compile time constant, um, you'll see compile time and runtime. Uh, so before, um, you sometimes see these error messages over here, um, even before we click the run button. And so that's doing a sort of ahead of time uh, analysis. So there's an analyzer that looks at your code as you're writing it. 
and will warn you when you have issues. Um, but then when you run it, it actually compiles the program um, and feeds it to the interpreter that you know does whatever it's supposed to do, whether it's calculations or um, printing something to the screen. Okay, um, and then there's things at runtime, so it could compile, but maybe it's a um, a dark program that runs on your mobile phone, like a Flutter app. Um, you could interact with it, and then based on what you do, you could assign your username to your account. Um, and so um, that's not something that's set at compile time, that's set at runtime by the user, for instance. Uh, so print is a handy way to display output. Um, so you can, this is a common thing, like in Ruby, we have a puts method, um, just different ways to print out to the screen. Okay, we had that um, number literal earlier, but if you have a single quoted or double quoted um, string, that is a, a string literal. Okay, it's just literally putting a string right there. That's what that is. Okay, again, um, the variable name you'll see like this where you have a value that's stored in, in some reference to that value. Um, and then you want to plop it in. Um, this is how you get repeatability. Um, so like if you had a you know, hundred emails you wanted to send to people of all the same email, but you wanted it, each one to say dear and then the first name of that person, um, you could say instead of you know having a hundred different DART programs where you have to put in the person's name each time, um, you can assign each one to a variable and then maybe loop through all those names and then say, for each of these first names, send this email. Okay, and so this is how you would insert that variable into the string of text uh, that you ultimately want to send to someone. The, uh, this other thing is if you have an expression, um, so it's, it's sort of like a computed value, it, it doesn't know what it is yet. Um, maybe you want to attach a random number to that person's name uh, for some reason, <laughs> you know, to, to try to make it unique if there's many Johns or something, um, then you can you can pass in an expression. Uh, but you need these curly braces uh, outside uh, to denote that it's a computed value. Again, this is called string interpolation. You include a variable or expressions string equivalent inside of a string literal. Okay, we touched on this earlier about the main keyword. This is the special required, like your program has to have it, a top level function where app execution starts. It's kind of nice because someone who's new to programming is often like, where do I place my code? Um, how does the, the program know like where to start? Um, and this main function is is that helper for you. It's basically an open door that says this is how you get into this establishment to do the things you want to do. Um, if you remove the main function, let's just comment this out. I'm going to say command forward slash. Maybe the analyzer will pick it up. It, it doesn't, so maybe they're not looking for uh, the existence of main. Maybe they're just looking at syntax and saying, have you structured your program generally? Uh, but when I try to run it, um, there's not going to be a main method. And it tells us that no main method found, the compilation failed. Okay. Uncomment that. There we go. Okay, and var. Uh, this is a way to declare a variable without specifying its type. The type of this variable int is determined by its initial value. So this sentence here is referring to this line right here. So a number variable, you know, we could we could assign anything we want to really. You know, we could say the string 42. Now it's not gonna work because print integer, this function is expecting an integer quite clearly. Maybe if we take that off, then it could work. 
Okay, so that worked because we kind of got loose about our constraints and our requirements. But if we really want to expect an integer, we can define it like that. Um, and so variable, and uh, another way we could say how to be more strict about this is to use that int, um, like so. So that's a way to say, okay, it's a variable, but I'm gonna specify the type, okay? And let's just change that back, keep it consistent. Okay. Um, okay, that, that is it for a basic Dart program. And it also says this site's code follows the conventions in the Dart, Dart style guide. Um, it's important to follow a good style guide um, so that um, when you look at your code, it's consistent, that you yourself are consistent, but then also when other people look at your code, whether they're teammates, um, future developers that, that join your team, um, follow a good style guide so there's no cognitive overhead or burden to uh, figure out your custom style. It's like, um, if everybody in the military is issued the same uh, gear, it makes it easy to to swap out and, and pick up someone else's gear uh, and continue your job. But if everybody had like customized gear, um, you know, it would be very uh, very difficult at that point to to interoperate. So that's the the idea uh, for consistency, and really, you know. Solving problems with programming is hard enough. Uh, the fewer decisions that you have to make about things like style, um, if you just adopt what much smarter people than ourselves have already come and created the language and the ecosystem and supported uh, developers before us and have, have you know, tried these things, um, for the most part, it's a pretty good dogma uh, to follow. So I would encourage you to just do that. Okay, and that is it for the basic Dart program.